I'm um, the director of the National United Youth Council Incorporated, and I'm here with Tatiana Cunningham. And today we are announcing a, um, a campaign against the Union County Sheriff Officer who on October 18th uh, brutally assaulted uh, Tatiana Cunningham, threw her down, face down on the floor um, in the, uh, uh, the one stop. Uh, service center here, um, need her in the back, put a handcuff on her, and took her to jail, basically. Now, she's going to get a chance to talk a little bit, but what, one of the things I want to make clear is that, first of all, this happened to a person that first works at this building. She is an employee and trainee through the Urban League, who was assigned to the one-stop uh, facility to be a clerk. She's a Union County College student, now 21 years old, Salam. trying to do the right thing. And let me finish doing the right thing in addressing this, this uh, her career and hopefully making things uh, solely right for her. Now, what happened on that day, on that uh, October 18th, was totally without any merit whatsoever. That Union County officer, um, Sandro Riaz, was assigned to this property to uh, metal detect uh, and search for anybody that may bring guns or any other kind of weapons in at the entrance of this. This is just routine. Union County uh, Sheriff officers assigned to buildings like this for that purpose. Well. Tatiana came at 10.30 that a.m. That, that day, and she went to do that. She went through the, the metal detector. She went through a wanding by the police. Front, then back, then back again, and the officer just had her turning which way but loose, and then said from his own mouth that, hey, wait a minute, this is, this is not enough. And she cooperated again and again. Then he got into a confrontation saying, oh, well, you know, you're not cooperating. That was crazy. After that, she went on to get her property that was searched by a fellow officer, and she pursued, uh, she, moved, she moved towards the uh, elevator. Upon reaching the elevator, the officer came behind her, asked her to remove herself from the elevator out into the hall. Of course she was shocked and amazed of why this officer is taking her now out of the elevator and, and to pursue her. Well, what ended up happening after that as everybody, everybody noticed. This officer immediately, upon her reach, getting out of the elevator, grabbed her arm, threw her down face first, twisted in the back, kneed her both knees in the back, and what happened then, she was handcuffed, thrown in jail, or uh, thrown into the holding cell at the Union County building. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what's happening. So we're here, to, to kick off an ongoing Wednesday campaign at this facility and to all charges are dropped, that that officer be reprimanded for his malicious conduct and that any other legal grounds we decide to pursue, that that will happen. This cannot happen to a young woman that we as a community send to be in, in, a, in a college to, to do the right thing to make a career out of herself and to, and to hopefully uh, uh, be a good productive citizen. Now, question. During the time of the ordeal, did anyone that in there that she worked with, management, anybody come out to say anything to the officer? The security guard that actually, the security guard that actually works there, he verified that I did work there. Okay, and, and, and what is your uh, capacity that you work there? What, what do you do? What, what do you do? Um, I'm a clerical assistant. I'm a clerical assistant for the uh, okay. Now you have a boss then. You have a, a, a have two, supervisors. two supervisors over you. Did they say anything? They was notified later after I was arrested. And 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 they came downstairs and one of the off one of the supervisors, her supervisor said, What are you doing? She works here. The security guard said she works here. That didn't stop the officer. He began to curse 
and use the F word and understand the B word. So, so this is the kind of abuse that, that was taken on that day, October 18th. And why, we don't know why, but we're gonna be reaching out to other groups and putting the pressure on and, and to make sure Tatiana Cunningham do not have to live with these charges because she's a college student. You know, people know now you have a, 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 a record, a police record, you can lose your grant. So she's fighting for not only her, 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 her life without bars, but she's fighting her, her life with her, her life to, for her betterment of her career. Um, not really, as of right now, again, I just want to talk about the complaint. So what was the process like of going in and filing the complaint? Say that again. So like, I'm away from the check pass. So what was the process like when you went in and you filed the complaint? Like, where did you go? Who did you speak with? Okay, so the next day after the incident, I had went to Sheriff uh, building across the street from the courthouse, um, or the annex courthouse. Okay. Um, and, Downtown. Yeah, and uh, basically I asked to speak to Eternal Fears. Mm -hmm. He was not present at the time. They contacted he me. He is in the director. He, he's okay. one of the detectives for that purpose. Right. He works with the Eternal Fears. He uh -huh. came down. I told him the situation. I gave him the incident. I gave him a. Do you know uh, his name? Remember? Not at the moment. That's fine. If you can, you know, give to Salam, I can uh -huh. find it. But yeah. And um, I told him, I physically, like, showed him step by step what happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, basically, um, he gave me a complaint paper. As a complaint paper, he gave me something. Did you have to stay overnight in jail? No, I'm going to be in there from the time I arrest 10.30 to, like, almost 3. 10.30 in the afternoon to 3? Did you have to see the judge? No, they just gave me my summer speakers and released me. Or, or. The complaint form that you had, what did you feel? You put the date and it happened, what happened, and that's it? You signed your name? They just basically said the complaint, so the complaint was towards. I had the officer um, name, first, last name, uh, badge number, Okay. And again, you don't have no kind of receipt that you kind of just signed that form with the info. I just signed it and they gave me a copy of my complaint. The copy of the complaint that you already had, or no? I went to go get the complaint. He signed like he was writing the complaint. Right. He gave me a copy of the complaint. That's the original police complaint that you have. Right. Okay. Not, not the not the internal affairs complaint. Right. So you don't again, you don't have a copy of the internal affairs complaint. That was it. Now, what, what usually happens, um, at least my my experience, and I've been doing it for a long time, is that there, the police would they would take a, a statement from the, the the victim, and then they will do an investigation, and then they will make a determination based on that investigation. Since there is criminal charges attached to this, they. they probably won't issue that just because of the fact of that. Um, our attorney, um, Shiraj uh, Mehta, Mehta, is involved and he's um, going to take it from there. We also have uh, recruited also um, Nathaniel Davis, the, the civil rights attorney. He's involved. So we are pretty lawyered up and ready to go from that front. My task moving forward is to bring other organizations involved that don't know. We just got this this, this, this um, case last week. So we're going to bring in other organizations to be involved with the NAACP, the National Action Network, and other organizations. So right now, right. again, the focus is more so getting these charges against you dropped, but not necessarily bringing up a lawsuit against the officer. Oh, we're mm -hmm. contemplating all of those. Right? Okay. All of the above. But, but that's one of, one of many demands that, that needs to happen. Um, you can't walk into a, 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 your own workplace in the morning and then be harassed at the people at the front door and then end up going to jail before the end of the day. That just doesn't make sense. Do you uh, know why he singled you out? Was there any 
the reason that he decided to come after you? Probably because of the way I was dressed. He thought probably I was a client and I was young. So probably he wanted to see how far my temper was going to go. Wow. Which is ridiculous because, yes, this is an uh, unemployment location or employment where people either don't have jobs or are looking for a job. They shouldn't be stigmatized. They shouldn't be profiled. They shouldn't be predicted, you know, upon walking to that building. That's ridiculous. You know, that just shouldn't happen. Anybody that walk in that building, they're looking for an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? This is not a storefront. This is not a 99 cent store. It's not a, a, a mall. This is a place where people trying to, what they call one-stop career, they're looking for a career. They're looking for an opportunity. They're looking for something to, that, that can change their life around. This young woman had that. This young woman was, was one who came in there looking for an opportunity. She was granted that opportunity by way of the, the Urban League through their program. She came in there and then went out two days before the program ended with handcuffs. That's just ridiculous, and that should not happen. All right. Thank so, you. So as of right now, um, talked about the grants and, and loans being at risk. Um, are you back at Union County College next semester, or are you finished?